Hey guys, it's Pete. Welcome back to another video on the channel. This is where we talk about money, finances, where we give you information to help you make the best decisions possible. Now, if you're using Trading212, Robinhood, um, or Free Trade um, as your investment vehicle to buy shares, there is a topic that is not being spoken about here on YouTube, which really needs to be highlighted. And it's something that you need to be thinking about if you're investing right now, even if you are a beginner. It has to be in the back of your mind the minute you get started. And the reason why this isn't being highlighted is because that most of the guys who are making videos about trading 212, free trade, Robinhood, and apps just like them are not experienced in the world of investments. They don't really have any experience. They're trying things out for themselves. And they're giving you guys advice on what stock you should be picking, which in my view is very, very dangerous. Now, I do want to add value to you guys. This is why I want to talk to you about this. And if you stay to the end of this video, I'm going to give you two tips on how you go about diversifying your share portfolio. But before we get started, if you've not listened to my podcast, I strongly encourage you to go check it out. It's where I talk about all things money and finances. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and it's available on Spotify. And don't forget, like I always ask at the beginning of these videos, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Let's get going. So let me just start off with giving everybody a bit of a background in terms of what I mean about diversifying your share portfolio. Because the term diversification can sound like rocket science. It can sound like, you know, really complicated stuff. And in reality, it's not. It's actually very, very simple. Diversification in simple terms means not putting all of your eggs in one basket. Now, if you're a beginner to investing, you may understand the difference between investing in a fund and you may understand how that is different to what you might be doing right now if you're using Trading212, Free Trade, or someone like Robin Hood. They're two different worlds there to achieve a very, very similar goal, but there are two different routes in going about the same thing. One has an advantage over the other, and also they have cons. They have disadvantages as well. So let's just be clear about that. But the reason why I want to talk about diversification, i.e. not putting all your eggs in one basket, is because when you invest money, there is a natural risk that you are putting your capital at risk. And you will see this on all of the websites. All of the providers will give you this generic sentence which says when you invest, your capital is at risk, you may get back less than you originally invested. And because you are using someone like Trading212 or Free Trade or Robinhood, unfortunately, it means that the onus is with you to make sure that you understand the risk that you're taking. And it's also down to you to diversify, i.e. not put all of your eggs in one basket in order to minimize your risk. Now, let's talk a little bit more about diversification. The whole point of diversification is so that you can spread your risk across a number of asset classes. Now, I haven't spoken about asset classes in any of my previous videos to this. It may have been in the investing for beginners video, but I didn't really go into much depth. Now, an asset class is effectively something that you can invest in. It's an investment basket. Traditionally, there are four very, very popular investment baskets that are known. So there's equities, which is shares, which is what you'll be buying on Trading212. A bond is effectively where a company or a government wants to raise some money. And what they do is they borrow money from individuals like you and I. And in return for a thousand pounds, they will say, I'm gonna give you a rate of return of 3% every single year and I'm going to give you your capital back at the end of the term. So bonds are pretty safe. They're more secure than equities. Then you have property. And property in the investment world is typically commercial property. So there'll be big office blocks, big shopping malls, things like that. And then the last asset class that is popularly and widely used is cash. Now, cash is a 
It's a beast onto its own. Not always do you get a good return in cash, but it is a good diversifier. It is there to provide a bit, little bit of liquidity within the investment. Now, if you do invest or you are investing, you know what you're talking about, or you have a little bit of a basic understanding, when you invest in the fund, you automatically get access to all four of those, those asset classes or investment baskets. It's all built in for you. You get immediate diversification. That's one of the big advantages of buying funds than investing in shares directly. And in addition to having that diversification already built into your investment strategy, you also have a professional, a professional investment management team looking after your money and making sure that you get a positive return. It means that you can just sit back and allow the professionals to do that, what they do, and you should hopefully see a positive return year on year. Although that doesn't always happen. I've known years where you've had good returns for two, three years, and then the fourth year is a negative year. But that is that is to be expected when you invest in the market. So you get clear benefits of investing within a fund. That's why most people invest in a fund because all of that work is done for them. They pay a small fee for a professional team to manage it for them. Now, if you're buying shares on Trading212, Retrade, or Robinhood, the onus is on you to manage your risk. And when you're buying shares with Trading212, for example, you do not have access to the other investment basket. So you are literally only using your equities or your share basket, one basket, which means that you are concentrating your risk in one area. So the conversation of diversifying, i.e. not putting all of your eggs in one basket, becomes a little bit more complex because there is an art and a system, a method to how you diversify your risk or spread your eggs when you're only using one investment basket, i.e. shares. So how do you do that? Now, I had a conversation with one of my followers on IG, and if you guys have not found me or connected with me there, I would strongly recommend that you do. I make sure that I answer every single direct message that I have, and I get a lot of messages. So if this kind of content not only interests you, but you feel quite passionate about this kind of content, please do connect with me on Instagram. My tag is right up there. And by the way, if you're enjoying what you're hearing right now, you're enjoying this conversation, make sure you smash that like button for me so it helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. So anyway, I was having a conversation with one of my followers about a week, maybe two and a half weeks ago on IG, and we were talking about how you diversify your share portfolio using someone like Trading212. Now, if you're only just starting out and you're buying fractional shares, this isn't going to be a huge problem for you from day one. However, it is something that you need to be thinking about for the long-term picture as you start to build your portfolio to a significant size. And the reason why I say that is because diversification is a fundamental instrument in managing your risk. If you put all of your money into, say, Tesla, and I do own Tesla stocks, so if I had all of my money in Tesla, and Elon Musk decides to tweet one afternoon, like he did a week and a half ago, and he wipes off a big chunk off the share price, I've got all of my money in that one basket, which means that I'm at the mercy of someone like Elon, for example, for my returns in my investment portfolio. The more prudent thing for me to do would be to have things like Tesla, Amazon, have some financials in there, have some manufacturing companies in there, have some energy companies in there. So what that effectively means is that if Elon were to tweet and were to wipe off a 10% um, value in the share price, I don't have all of my money losing 10% in one go because the fact is I don't hold all of my money in Tesla. And that's the idea of diversification. It's spreading your risk or holding your money across a number of companies in a number of different sectors. So what's the first thing you can do to help you diversify your share portfolio? General rule of thumb is that you need between 12 and 20 stocks in order to begin diversifying. I'm just going to say that again because that's very, very important. Between 12 and 20 stocks in order for you to begin to diversify. Now, in the conversation I had with my follower about two, two and a half weeks ago, 
they thought that you only needed between three and four. I'm going to unequivocally tell you right now that that is not true. And who is, whoever has told you that is incorrect. You need more companies in order to, to begin to diversify your share portfolio. Tip number two is that you need to make sure that you're diversifying your selection of shares across a number of sectors. Now, if you're buying shares with the likes of Trading212, Free Trade, or Robinhood, sectors should not be a concept that is alien to you. So for example, within most of the stock markets, be it here in the UK or there in America, you will have different sectors. So for example, Apple is a tech company. So that's part of the tech sector. Then you have manufacturing. Then you have financials, which will house some of the banks. So here in the UK, people like HSBC, Barclays. Then you have energy, which will include people like um, BP. Then you have pharmaceuticals, which will include people like AstraZeneca, so on and so forth. You need to be able to select companies across different sectors in order to truly diversify. Putting all of your eggs in one basket could also look like buying Tesla, Amazon, Google, Apple, and companies like that who are all based within the tech industry. It's very important that you diversify across different sectors. So how do you go about doing that? Try and get a list of all of the sectors that are available within a stock market. So tech, manufacturing, pharmaceuticals, financials, energy. Those are just a few. Then what you want to do is then you want to research the top companies within that sector or companies within that sector that you may have heard of or you may believe in. And the research on this is very, very important. It's not enough to simply buy shares based on the share price alone. The share price does not give you the full picture. So understanding how the business works, how they generate income, what their forecasts are, how, whether they are highly leveraged in terms of debt, all these things are very, very important in understanding how a company operates, what their long-term picture might look like. Because let's face it, you don't want to go and buy a company that looks good on paper right now, but in two, three years time, possibly might fall because they're not forward thinking. A big company that fell foul to this is Kodak, and they are a prime example. They did not move with the times of digital photography. They thought everything was still going to be on film, and lo and behold, they are no longer here. So it's important that you do your research. It's important that you understand what a company does, how they actually generate their income, what their future plans are, their PE ratios, if you can get those. Those things are really important for you to research and to know. So again, just to recap, the first thing that you need to do to diversify your portfolio is look for between 12 and 20 stocks for you to purchase. 12 to 20 companies for you to purchase. That's when you begin to really diversify. Tip number two is to look for those companies across different sectors. It could be financials, it could be tech, it could be manufacturing, it could be energy, it could be pharmaceuticals, it could be anything, but you need to diversify across different sectors in order to manage your risk. Now, I do have an investment course where I'm taking people through the basics of investing, because if you are a first time investor, it's important that you understand these things. Trading 212 and companies like that are great because it makes it easy for you to invest in the markets. However, there are disadvantages to doing it and there are advantages to doing it. And the investment course that I've, that I've designed is there to help you come to terms and gain the knowledge that you need as a first time investor. If you're interested in that, I will leave a link in the comments below for you to register interest. And once it goes into my learning management system, it will be available for you. But if you do register your interest, there's a little bit of a gift for you there as well. So guys, I hope that video has made sense. I'll be open to take any questions that you guys have. You guys have been great so far in terms of the comments in the comment section and also finding me on IG. So again, I would really encourage you find me on IG. I always respond to every single message that I receive, every single question that I get. And again, if you've not listened to the podcast, go check it out. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next week, have a good weekend.